This is the story of Carl, who has three ships which fall under the scope of the EU MRV regulation. The story is about how Carl manages to work with an accredited verifier to fulfil his obligations. Along the way, Carl adds a new ship to his fleet, which also falls under the scope of the regulation. Let's first meet the characters which will have an important role to play in the story. This is Carl. He owns a shipping company. This is Victor. He is an accredited verifier for MRV. This is Monica. She is a member state representative responsible for MRV as flag and port state. This is Sandra. She is the Thetis MRV system administrator working at EMSA. And this is Thetis, the system itself. So, Carl owns three ships which fall under the scope of the EU MRV regulation. They are named the first, the second and the third. They all fly the flag of a member state where Monica is responsible under the MRV implementation and enforcement. While preparing to respond to the obligation under the EU MRV regulation, Carl decides that the owner himself will be the MRV company, the entity responsible to report the CO2 emission for each reporting period. Carl now needs to find an accredited verifier and browses the internet for information. By visiting websites of the national accreditation bodies, Carl finds Victor as being suitable to become his verifier. Following a normal negotiation process, they came to a commercial agreement establishing the rules for their relation towards EU MRV reporting and verification tasks. Carl is well aware that Thetis MRV has been developed to cater for the regulation mandatory requirements but also supporting functionalities to be used on a voluntary basis, such as the drafting of the monitoring plan. Therefore, to have a better control on the full process, Carl and Victor agreed that they will use Thetis MRV for the mandatory and voluntary tasks, making sure the workflow and procedures will be fully in line with the regulation requirements. Carl has been working for some time defining the monitoring plan even before the Thetis MRV system is made available. Procedures have already been draft and the content of the monitoring plan as proposed in Annex 1 of Implementing Regulation 2016-1927 is already in digital format. So, he is ready to enter all this information in Thetis MRV but he still didn't apply for an account yet. To get his account, Carl goes to the Thetis MRV website and registers by filling in a short form. An email is sent to him requesting confirmation and providing a link for activation of the account. He activates his account and can now log in in the system. However, the very first action to be done in the system is to record the partnership established with Victor flowing their commercial agreement. Victor is already registered in the system as an accredited verifier and therefore it was very easy for Carl to find Victor and appointing him as a work partner for verification. Now that Carl is linked to an accredited verifier, he can configure his fleet by selecting his vessels from the system database. In case one of his vessels has been claimed, may another company or not found, the system will guide Carl for follow-up actions. For each ship in the fleet, Carl first confirms and updates all the relevant particulars which could be outdated. Then he needs to link each one of his ships to Victor, so that Victor will be able to verify information once it's submitted to him. It could happen that Carl decides to have more than one verifier and have different verifiers assigned to different ships, but that was not Carl's option in this exercise. With all the pre-setup done, it's now time to enter the drafted monitoring plan into the system. So, Carl goes to the system and adds the monitoring plan content already drafted, making any necessary adjustments. Once done, Carl saves the monitoring plan which is now ready to be submitted to Victor for assessment. Carl 
clicks Submit to Verifier and Victor is notified by email. Victor then assesses the monitoring plan produced by Carl. The monitoring plan is confirmed to be in line with the MRV regulation and Victor clicks Assessed. Carl then receives an email from Thetis MRV informing that the monitoring plan is assessed. None of this information is shared with anyone else with access to the system, except for Sandra, in case Carl or Victor requests support under the help desk terms. Let's now pretend we're already in January 2018 and Carl is well aware that he should start monitoring emissions for his ships during the year. He is also well aware that an emissions report for 2018 will have to be produced in 2019 leading to its first document of compliance in April 2019. As Carl is decided to fully use Thetis MRV, CO2 emissions will be reported directly in the system for each voyage. However, because Carl's company has invested on an IT system where all his ship's voyages and fuel consumption are already recorded, he will make use of this information, exporting it to a file which will then be uploaded in Thetis MRV. But Carl's ship, the third, is still not covered with the IT system. So Carl decides that, for this particular ship, data on a per voyage basis will be recorded directly through the system interface by his staff. For this task, Carl has created an account for an employee which will enter the voyage information on a weekly basis as it is being received from the ship. As a side note, it will be possible for a registered user to create secondary users' accounts with their same privileges. Moving again to the future, let's now pretend we've reached November 2018. The business is going well and Carl is buying another vessel, the new ship. For the monitoring plan, Carl takes advantage of the Thetis MRV functionality to clone previous assessed monitoring plan from a similar ship and makes the necessary adjustments, saving time for him and Victor. For the emission report, because the new ship is not yet connected to the company IT system and voyage emissions from previous owner are still to be received, Carl considers that it will be easier to monitor emissions on a voyage basis outside the system and then record in the system the annual aggregated figures. We travel again into the future and now we've reached January 2019. Carl is well aware that an emissions report for 2018 for each ship has to be generated and submitted to Victor for verification. For ships where Carl decides to report emissions on a per voyage basis in Thetis MRV, the task is highly simplified. With a click of a button, all relevant CO2 emissions are compiled and automatically aggregated. Just as a side note, please note that the system will also cater for in-port consumption, but for simplicity, this is not addressed in this roleplay. For the new ship, Carl has to make all the calculations outside the system and then enter the annual figures because voyage information has been left out. To summarise, for the first and the second, Carl reports CO2 emissions on a per voyage basis by uploading a CSV file in the system and makes use of the automatic aggregation. For the third, Carl also reports emissions on a per voyage basis, but in this case, using the interface to enter voyages one by one, he can still make use of the automatic aggregation. For the new ship, Carl will only report the annual aggregated figures and will use the interface. He will not be able to use the automatic aggregation. Let's now see what happens to the first and the second, taking the first as an example. Carl confirms the automatic aggregation done by the system, amends the emission report as deemed necessary and saves. He then clicks to submit the emission report to the verifier and Victor receives an email informing that an emission report is available for verification. Victor checks the emission report consumptions from the voyages reported by Carl and cross-checks with additional information using a risk assessment approach and ship tracking data. 
emission reports for the first is confirmed to be OK. Victor clicks verified as satisfactory and Carl is then informed by email. Then Victor generates the verification report adding additional information as per the requirements of the regulation. Once saved, the verification report report is made available to Carl and a document of compliance for the reporting period is automatically created, attesting compliance with the regulation. Carl is informed by email that the emission report is verified as satisfactory. Still following the legal obligation set out in the EU MRV regulation, Carl needs now to notify the Commission of the verified emission report and for that he clicks the button Submit to Commission and his obligation to inform the Commission is completed. Monica will be able to check in the system the verified emission report and confirm the issuance of the document of compliance. Carl can download the document of compliance from the system and sends it to the ship. It is important to remember that a document of compliance is only valid once the emission report is submitted to the Commission. Having an emission report verified as satisfactory is not sufficient to be in compliance. Now let's get back to the ship, the third, which was not linked to the company IT system and for which data was entered through the Thetis MRV interface. Victor noted that emissions from a couple of voyages were missing in the emission report. Because Victor and Carl have previous agreed to use the non-conformity functionality in Thetis MRV for better audit and follow-up, Victor records a non-conformity for the missing information. Victor then clicks Submit to Company to send the emission report back to Carl for revision and Carl receives an email informing that the emission report is now under revision. Carl looks into the voyages and notices the missing data. Carl, employee, reviews the data, adds the missing voyages and saves the amendments. Carl then clicks Submit to Verifier and Victor is informed by email to checks in the system a new version of the emission report. Victor confirms that the new version of the emission report is now in line with his figures and closes the open non-conformity. Then he clicks verified as satisfactory and the emission report is set as verified as satisfactory. Now, the same notification process and generation of the verification report and document of compliance will repeat as we have seen for the ships the first and the second. Now let's look at the new ship, where auto aggregations is not possible because only annual figures will be recorded in the system. Because voyage emissions are not available, Victor had no information in the system to cross-check. Victor calls Carl to discuss the matter. Carl takes action and contacts the previous owner to collect the missing data. Carl has received all the information he needs in Excel and PDF files and his team does the aggregation manually outside the system. After amending the annual emission report figures outside, that is MRV, data has now to be entered in the system for verification. Carl, employee, clicks the emission report, copies the data into the system and saves. The annual report is now updated and Carl clicks Submit to Verifier for verification and Victor is informed by email. He checks the emission report entered by Carl and finds some discrepancies when cross-checking with his own annual calculations. Because per voyage data was not inserted, it is very difficult for Victor to help Carl finding where the problem could be. Therefore, Carl sends the receive files to Victor for cross-checking and Victor eventually finds the problem after careful investigation. Carl and Victor still need to store these files because, as this information is not in Thetis MRV, those files may have to be considered to demonstrate compliance with per-voyage monitoring. 
An example where these files could be needed could be when a national accreditation body audits the verifier to maintain its accreditation. In the end, Victor suggests that they could have done some additional processing in the file from previous owner and then upload that information in Thetis MRV to make use of the automatic aggregation functionality. That would have simplified the process. To summarise the story that you've just heard, there are three main conclusions we'd like to highlight. The first one is that companies can start drafting the monitoring plan even before having registered in the system. The second is that all submissions and notifications required by the regulation regarding monitoring plan, emission report, verification report and document of compliance are fulfilled by clicking on the appropriate button. And the last one is that, although per voyage reporting is not mandatory to be done in the system, if done, automatic data aggregation is possible, which allows for a highly simplified process to generate the emission report. Thank you for your attention. We are now available for any questions that you may have.